It's early in the morning, and Arwa is getting ready for another day of selling noodles in the western suburbs of Chongqing. is a nickname that conveys a sense of familiarity and makes people feel like they're eating at home instead of a restaurant. As the water begins to boil, more customers arrive. He does his best business. In Chongqing, rice is served with meals every day. But the local people love noodles for breakfast. Noodle restaurants fill the streets and alleys. Each has a simple name, one that makes you think of eating at home. Cousin Ju's noodles, Auntie Jung's noodles, Old Place noodles, Chubby Chick's noodles, Big Mama's tasty noodles. In Chongqing, it's easy to satisfy a craving for savory noodles. A newspaper once held a competition to select the top 50 noodle vendors in Chongqing. Tens of thousands of noodle lovers responded, and the results are still influential today. A young man nicknamed Noodle Hunter is an amateur small noodles chef. Even when he cooks alone at home, he'll prepare more than a dozen types of spices to ensure the right taste. Uh, 
家里面都吃，我也说的话，你看啊，一般来说哈，最少要十四种佐料，但是我今天是准备了十七样佐料。Once decided to eat at all the top 50 noodle restaurants in Chongqing. in Chongqing.
He is like most of those who work in the small noodles business. Chongqing residents love them for their attitude. Compared with Lanzhou stretched noodles, Beijing soybean paste noodles, and Shanxi sliced noodles, Chongqing small noodles are less famous, but attract many local customers. Mr. Gore is in his early 40s, but he's been doing this for more than 20 years. He insists that small noodles must be homemade. Cooked makes a huge difference. They won't be tossed into the pot until the water boils. When the noodles begin to boil, the heat is turned down to the lowest flame, and one minute later, a bowl of cold water is added. Those who prefer al dente cooked noodles will be served first, and those who prefer them slightly more tender are served a minute or two later. Each bowl of noodles is mixed with sauces according to each customer's request. Rune Tu lives and works in Beijing. He was born and raised in Chongqing and is well known for his music video, Small Noodles. Every time he returns to Chongqing, he looks for a special bowl of small noodles. The uniqueness of small noodles does not come from rare and hard to get ingredients but because each noodle chef creates a special taste with common ingredients that are easily found in the market. People in Chongqing love small noodles because the cooks never stop surprising them with their creative use of spices they are familiar with. Bench Noodles owner, Mr. Zheng's wife, Zheng Zhongfun, thinks of him as a magician. <laughs> Zheng Zhongfun is proud of her husband, a master noodle chef. Oh, 
。到那里打起吃白糕吃着，你味道儿没哈大家好吃白糕，久久吃还不来了噻。A shopping mall in Chongqing is home to a popular noodle shop where the customers have to queue up for their lunch. In a shabby building a few meters away from this shop, a man is busy preparing the spices for the noodle shop. Mr. Dong is the owner of Dong's Noodles, which is among the top 50 places to get small noodles. Sometimes he works alone in this place, preparing the spices and sauces for the noodles. When the spices and sauces are delivered to the shop, his wife will mix it to serve the customers with noodles one bowl after another. Despite the different taste, all the spices and sauces for small noodles have some things in common. Pickled mustard tuber, produced in a nearby county and chopped into fine bits, is one common ingredient. They all use old ginger, skinned pieces, chopped into fine bits, instead of fresh ginger. The noodle cooks all use a thin garlic sauce, instead of mashed garlic, to ensure it doesn't overwhelm the taste of the noodles. The thin garlic sauce is made by pouring boiling broth into a basin of mashed garlic. The people of Chongqing believe that the attraction of small noodles is in how the spices are mixed. At Dong's Noodles, the secret of mixing the spices comes from Dong's mother. In 1972, something happened during the Cultural Revolution that changed Dong's life forever. When he came back to Chongqing, he was 38 and had to learn to survive. The noodle shop created a stable life for him. Then his mother began to worry about his marriage. Dong and his wife are still happily married. They work hard in the noodle shop, which is quite successful. Dong's mother left her son with a skill to put food on the table.
second chance to start his life with a noodle shop. Bench Noodles owner, Jung Ling Ping, was laid off from a food company. Without a job to go to each day, he began to play mahjong and soon became addicted to it. A game to pass the time gradually evolved into a gambling habit and he ended up in debt. Desperate for money, he sold his house. It was barely enough to pay his gambling debt. Luckily, his wife helped him to set up a noodle shop to keep the family going financially. Business grew and he paid off the debt. Jung learned a lesson and vowed to quit gambling. His noodle shop is now the focus of his life. The noodle shop became famous, attracting many offers to franchise the operation, but he always turns them down. The couple hopes the noodle shop will continue to ensure a peaceful and happy life for them. In the early 1990s, Tung Yi Bi was laid off and started a small noodle shop to make a living. Her noodles attracted many customers because of the superb hot chili oil she prepares. She learned to make hot chili oil as a child. It was her father's favorite. He was working on a ship that sailed the Yangtze River. At every meal, whether at home or on the ship, he'd mix the food with some of his own homemade hot chili oil. The people of Chongqing love spicy food. Almost every family knows how to make hot chili oil. Because there are various kinds of hot peppers available in the market, each family has their own preference. Some like hot peppers from Sichuan. Others want hot peppers from Hunan or Guizhou. Tung Yi Bi makes hot chili oil with two different kinds of peppers. The recipe is a well-guarded family secret. Making hot chili oil is a complex process that stimulates all the five senses.
in Chongqing and has various snack shops to cater to tourists. Tang Yibi's business is booming. The competition from other snack shops seems to have little impact. Once or twice a week, Mr. Hu will make some hot chili oil to sell in his shop. Hot chili oil is an indispensable seasoning for Chongqing small noodles. However, Hu doesn't sell noodles at all. He sells pickled vegetables ground hot pepper and hot pepper oil. Who has cultivated the land by his home and turned it into a tiny vegetable garden? On the bamboo fence surrounding his garden, he carves poems and ancient verses. No pain, no gain. Those with love enjoy the mountains, and those with wisdom appreciate the rivers. All these words are whose mottos for living, a man who's trying to make retired life as interesting as possible. Who is a true master of chili peppers? the less pure the fragrance and taste will become. He doesn't add any other ingredients, which is exactly what his neighbors love about the oil. Whose hot chili powder is popular too. 
In fact, everything he sells is popular among his neighbors. He has no intention of expanding his business. He's content with a small shop that lets him live a simple life. A good hot chili oil is the base. The next important part of making small noodles is the toppings, although it's not necessary for the traditional small noodles. The people of Chongqing call small noodles with toppings an update of an old classic. The Wanzhou district is nearly 300 kilometers from downtown Chongqing. A few noodle shops there are listed among Chongqing's top 50 noodle shops. Noodle Hunter has to drive a long way to sample them. Wanzhou's unique location and cultural legacy creates a wide variety of local delicacies. The noodles here are famous for the multitude of toppings. Nearly 50 different types of toppings are available, but the favorite toppings include... Then soybean paste is added and many other spices. Stirring and frying for a few minutes leaves the whole kitchen filled with an appealing aroma. To cook pork with green peas, they soak the peas in cold water for a day before boiling over a small flame with broth made from the bones. After the peas become extremely soft, they are mixed with the ground pork. Beef tendon noodles, noodles with intestine. Such a variety of toppings make small noodles, a simple form of noodles, an important cuisine in Chongqing. This transformation has taken place as the economy has grown stronger. More than 20 years ago, Gore Fu Sheng and his wife sold vegetables. They worked hard, but couldn't afford to send their three children to school. To earn more money, they started a small noodle shop.
officer Rune 2 has been in Beijing for 10 years. He often reads about noodle restaurants in Beijing in Life and Fashion magazine. But noodles in Beijing taste different than those in Chongqing. This inspired him to write a song about it. Noodle Hunter has been sampling noodles at Chongqing's top 50 noodle places for more than six months. Chongqing folks call delicacy hunters like him chow hounds. He's curious to know what makes the number one noodle shop so special. After walking two blocks and across a few alleys, he finds old granny's noodles. Most of the chow hounds had voted for this lady, the chef of this restaurant. Um, Eighteen years earlier, she started a small noodle shop in a neighborhood where the local residents were workers at a state-owned factory. Like many noodle shops in residential areas, Liao started off with a vendor's stall and a few outdoor tables and chairs. At first, she didn't even have a sign. Rain or shine, the factory workers would crowd her stall to have a bowl before going to work. Liao never thought that her noodles would rate so highly among Chongqing's noodle shops. Her son, on the other hand, is much more ambitious. With her son as manager, Old Granny's Noodles has its own website and offers training and franchise opportunities. One of its outlets is at the airport. It's on its way to becoming a modern fast food chain. Tian Fu, which is quite a distance from downtown Chongqing, becomes a film set. The film, Searching for Winter Sweet in Snow, is written and directed by Cha Lin Yu. He's also the cinematographer and martial arts director. He performs in the film as a kung fu master. Cha Lin Yu and his crew have lunch in the noodle shop of Cha Lin Yu and his wife, Jiang.
In the 1970s and 80s, he worked as a cinematographer on the film Your Smiling Face and was director of the film Battle of Tianmen. There seemed to be... snow could be an analogy of the foodies journey to find noodles comforting to their hearts.